coming up, we get our first look inside the Disney Skyliner gondola vehicles, the Epcot entrance overhaul construction begins, and we have new details on the Disney Villains After Hours hard ticket event coming to the Magic Kingdom this summer. My name is Brayden, and welcome to Mickey Views News. All who come to this happy place, welcome. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop, and that's what's bothering me. Well, there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about the new Magic Kingdom intro. We got the new dragon in there and everything. But before we get over to the Magic Kingdom, we are going to do one quick run around Walt Disney World, covering everything new this week, starting with the Disney Skyliner system. This week, Disney gave a special preview of the system to local media outlets. And in the news coverage, we got the big reveal, the first look inside the Disney Skyliner gondola cabins. When I saw this Disney Skyliner gondola interior revealed, I just thought, that looks awesome. And here's why. The seats. If you look at the gondolas Disney bought from the manufacturer Doppelmeyer, they come with very modern looking, very bland, padded seating, probably nylon or something of the sort so it can withstand the weather and all that sort of stuff. But here, with the Disney gondolas on the outside, they don't look that custom. They look like the regular Doppelmeyer gondolas with some stickers on them. Disney did some cool design stuff to make them a cool homage to the original Skyway bucket cars that we used to have over Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom, of course. So all the outside is just a Doppelmeyer car, you know, with the stickers on it. On the inside, we see some genuine customization that Disney did here uh, with the wood slat style, which I think really goes well with the parks, of course, you know, because it sort of looks like a park bench almost in the sky, which I think is just a really cool concept. And they also go really well with the original design elements we saw back in the 70s when Walt Disney World opened, uh, when this is uh, sort of a popular style. Very classy and all around, I think, just a good idea. Also, there's a Disney Skyliner logo inside the cabins as well. While I'm very much a fan of this interior. You know, there's always those people out there who are going to take the opportunity to poke some fun at the Disney Skyliner. Some people were saying Disney is embracing the fact that the gondolas have no AC and might be hot by making the seats wood like a sauna. Uh, pretty funny stuff there. The thing is, I think most of the genuine criticisms with the Skyliner aren't being talked about almost at all because on one side, you have the people acting like Disney who invested hundreds of millions of dollars into this system is really going to let these things be 100 degrees. And on the other side, you have the people people on the reverse who are defending Disney to the ends of the earth saying that they shouldn't have air conditioning. It would weigh too much on the system. Never mind the fact that these lines can hold 20, 30 times the weight that's going to be put on them uh, with these cabins. The passive cooling will be fine. The real criticism here is when did fine become the standard bearer for the most popular vacation kingdom on the planet? What if Disneyland had just been fine? Think of all the cool stuff we wouldn't have if Disney hadn't put in that extra effort, that extra dollar, that extra step to make everything one notch above all the other competition. So when I look at enclosed gondolas in Florida, we've heard Disney opted not to get the AC package offered to them. It seems to me like they put budget and saving money over having a luxury system. It's not to say that the gondolas won't be fine. I'm sure the gondolas will be cool enough with the passive cooling. I'm sure it'll work just fine. But the point is they could have been nicer. They could have been more luxury. They could have put in the AC units. They could have made it a luxury system in a luxury resort with luxury pricing for sure, and I think that's what they should have done, but we just aren't in that age of the company anymore, unfortunately. It took the monorail going 10 years past its replacement date till doors started falling off before someone finally said, oh, I guess we have to make new ones, and that still hasn't been confirmed by Disney, and those rumors first started popping up two years ago. The AC aside and the inclusion of the Disney character stickers on only some of the gondolas, but not on others, all that aside, who knows what's going on there, I do think the Skyliner system will greatly help transportation at this section of the resort in the mornings and afternoons. The nights after fireworks is really where the Skyliner's abilities will be put to the test, and that is going to be the make or break for whether the Disney Skyliner is a good addition or a bad addition. How does it handle those crowds after the Illuminations replacement, Epcot Forever, after the Spectaculars with all the people in Galaxy's Edge as well? How does the system handle all those guests going to those stations at once? If it does well, which it might, because it seems like this thing has huge hourly guest capacity. These gondolas are going to be moving fast. They have a separate track to load handicapped guests. It's going to be super quick. I do think that there is a chance that it will work. Let me know what you guys think over in Epcot today. Taking a look at these photos from Blog Mickey. Walls are up at the Epcot entrance as the Epcot overhaul project finally begins today with work starting on restructuring the transportation entrances to the park. We've been talking about this for so long, the Epcot overhaul, and finally it is beginning. The tram and guest traffic is now being rerouted uh, to the side of the construction zone there. We've already seen transportation over 
overhauls like this at the Magic Kingdom in Hollywood Studios recently, as Disney attempts to streamline the transportation layout at every park out ahead of the massive anticipated crowds for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Difference here in Epcot is these entrance renovations will extend all the way into the park, with the Leave a Legacy monolith being removed and the Epcot Center fountain returning, as you can see in the concept here. Disney said the Leave a Legacy plaques would be moved to a new display outside the park's gates, and that is where they'll be put. So as the transportation overhaul gets underway here outside the park, I think we'll also see that new Leave a Legacy area start to come together as well, followed by the removal of the monoliths inside the park, the new planters and fountains coming in as well. So excited to see this first big part of the Epcot Spine Project get underway. Uh, the Epcot Spine Project, of course, being a major part of the Epcot overhaul, where Disney is planning on reimagining everything down the middle of Epcot, from the transportation entrances outside the park to the front gates, and then all the way to the port of entry, going into the World Showcase. Everything in between there is all going to be refreshed. Even Spaceship Earth itself uh, might be getting a refresh as part of that, but literally everything along there is all going to be different, and I'm very excited to see what Disney does there, because the crowd flow has needed help for a long time, and it's really exciting to see Disney finally getting underway with that. Lastly, in the Magic Kingdom today, there is a brand new hard ticket event coming to the Magic Kingdom, Disney Villains After Hours, which is similar to the regular Disney After Hours, with a limited number of guests, free treats, the rides open with little to no wait, but now with villains. The event will cost $139 per person and will feature several extra never-before-seen perks, including the Maleficent Dragon Float going around the park at night, breathing fire, a new Villains Unite the Night stage show featuring almost every classic Disney villain you can think of, and special villain overlays to Space Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean. Also, the free treats themselves offered at the regular Disney After Hours event are going to have special villain items for them at these villain nights. All very exciting stuff. The one odd thing here is that I think might be a deal breaker for many people, and maybe even the event itself, no meet and greets have been announced. In fact, the press release even emphasizes there won't be meet and greets because the characters will be doing a stage show uh, throughout the event. Disney has had sellout villains hard ticket events in the past that have been huge, but the main draw of those was the ability to meet ultra rare Disney villains in the parks and take photos with them. So we'll see how this impacts this villains event. I do think that it will have a negative impact, but we probably won't see it on the first few nights. They'll probably all sell out because there aren't a lot of these and it does seem like they're taking the best of Disney after hours and the best of not so scary and combining them. But I do think the lack of meet and greets may have an impact on the sales with this event. So it'll be interesting to see how exactly it goes. Looking at the dates here, you can see it runs throughout the summer up until we get to the not so scary season there. The thing is, I am actually going to be in Disney looking for apartments in Central Florida the day this event premieres. So I could hop over that night and cover the entire event for you guys, but it is $139 for, we don't even know how long, probably just three hours. I did do a Disney After Hours vlog late last year that I know a lot of you guys enjoyed. So should I do this villains version, the world premiere of it the first night? Let me know what you guys think. It is, it would still be $109 with my pass holder discount of $30 off the event. It'd still be $109. Uh, so let me know if you guys think I should do that. I still have some time to decide. Tickets go on sale April 29th. That's the latest news in the world of Disney. Be sure to subscribe with the notification bell on so you never miss any new Disney news. We've got shirts for sale on Teespring with all designs starting at under $20. You can pick colors, types of shirts, customize it however you like, get an awesome Disney shirt, and help support us in the process. I'm working on Impromptu Imagineering. It's going very well. I'm going to get back to it after this video. We also have our PayPal in the description if you just want to do a one-time donation, or you can check out our Patreon where you can donate monthly and for different tiers, there are different rewards, uh, like you can be an executive producer credited at the end of all these videos, or you can just uh, get a behind the scenes feed of everything going on with everything we're doing over here at Mickey Views. I am currently working on Impromptu Imagineering, our new show where you're gonna be coming up with new attraction concepts and visualizing them in the videos themselves. This is extremely ambitious, super high production value. I have a drawing rig in the studio right now where I'm doing all the illustrations and drawings for this new show. It is extremely ambitious and I'm so excited to share with you guys, but that is what I'm currently working on. It is very high production value. I do want to get back to the Magic Weekly and Mickey View's daily news as soon as possible. Those two shows being on hiatus while I work on Impromptu Imagineering here. Of course, the Mickey View's news videos here will continue no matter what. That's all for this episode of Mickey View's News. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Brayden. Have a magical day.